Hey guys, it's Miss Josette, and I'm here on the Saturday before Easter to bring us our Kids Club message, and I have something really important I want to share with you. I'm just finishing up getting some eggs ready, and I'm getting some things ready for my family's Easter celebration, but I wanted to take a moment to share a little bit um, of a message with you guys today with the grown-ups and the kids alike that listen to our kids club messages and so I'm gonna share something using these eggs so I'm gonna set this one down and I'm gonna set these ones down so we can look at them one at a time because each of these eggs has something in it that's gonna help us share the story so in this first one is gonna go back to last Sunday there's something in this first egg that is made out of something that will go back to last Sunday. Now, help me remember what happened last Sunday. Last Sunday was Palm Sunday, which was the start of Holy Week. And on Palm Sunday, Jesus came riding into Jerusalem on a donkey with the shouts of Hosanna. And so we passed out palms in church. And a lot of folks asked me to make their palm into something. And so I made a lot of palms into a cross and this cross reminds me of the fact that Jesus willingly took up a cross for us Jesus willingly took up a cross for us carried a cross a very heavy wooden cross down the dusty streets and willingly took up a cross and carried that, knowing what that cross was going to be used for. You see, it was something that after Jesus spent the evening Thursday with his disciples and had the Last Supper, and he knew that Judas Iscariot had betrayed him, and he told the disciples that he was going to be leaving them and what was going to be happening. He went into the Garden of Gethsemane and he prayed there, and he asked his father, he said, Father, not my will, but yours be done. He prayed for some other way for it to happen. But he still willingly, willingly means that he did it because he wanted to, not because someone made him. He did it because he wanted to. He willingly took up a cross to take my sins and your sins and all the sins of the world onto him. And we've talked about what sin means. Sin is anything that we think, say, or do that displeases God. And Jesus was perfect, but he willingly took up our cross and took up a cross and carried it for us and willingly died on that cross. So that first egg makes me think of that. Then this next egg has something in it. This next egg has three nails in it. Now, these nails that I have at my house are for hanging pictures. They're called Brad's. And they're really tiny little nails. They're really tiny. The nails that they would have used to put Jesus on the cross, they certainly weren't this small. This nail wouldn't be able to hold a person onto a big wooden cross at all. The nails that Jesus willingly had put into his hands and his feet after he had been whipped after he had had the crown of thorns placed upon his head, after he had been drugged through the streets, he was so tired and already in so much pain, he willingly then took three nails, one in each hand and one in his feet, three nails. He took three nails willingly for us. Those three nails Help us remember that we are forgiven if we choose to ask for that forgiveness. Those three nails help us remember that we're forgiven. You know, those nails probably hurt really, really bad. And Jesus willingly accepted that suffering. He willingly suffered and accepted that pain for you and I, even though that probably hurt really bad. And then the Bible tells us, that that all happened on what we call Good Friday. The Bible tells us that Jesus hung on the cross and then he said, it is finished. And then just to make sure that he was dead, a Roman soldier pierced his side and it says that water and blood ran out and they made sure that he was dead and then they took him down from the cross. 
And then they took him and they placed him in a tomb. Now, outside that tomb, they placed a very heavy stone. Now, of course, the stone was bigger than this stone, but this is a pretty big stone for a pit to put an Easter egg. They placed a very heavy stone. They placed a stone outside that tomb so that nobody could just come and take Jesus' body. They were afraid that his friends or other people might try to take him. So they put a very heavy stone outside of his tomb because they wanted to make sure that nobody could come and take him. They also had guards that were outside of that tomb to make sure that Jesus stayed in there. And Jesus was in that tomb Friday night and Saturday. But Sunday morning, two women came to the tomb to prepare Jesus's body as they were supposed to. They brought the anointing oils to prepare his body and the stone was rolled away. And they found that the tomb was empty. They found that Jesus' body wasn't there. And so this last egg, this last egg is empty. Just like that tomb was empty. Now, when you guys have egg hunts and you find eggs, I'm sure none of you want to find an empty egg. But the tomb being empty is the best thing that could have happened on Easter Sunday morning. And you say, Miss Josette, but why? Because Jesus was risen, just as he promised. You see, Jesus told all of the Pharisees and the chief priests, and he told his disciples that this temple, this temple will be destroyed, but in three days, it'll, be, it'll rise again. He wasn't talking about a physical building. He was talking about himself. The he was the temple he was talking about. That he would rise again in three days. He promised us that he was going to be dead and crucified. But he was going to come again in three days. But he has also made another very important promise. That he is going to come again for those of us who believe in him. For those of us who believe that he willingly died upon that cross, that he willingly took those three nails in his hands and feet, those three nails that symbolize that we are forgiven, those three nails that showed how much he loved us, that he still loves us through all of the good things through all of the bad things, through all of the hard things, he loves us. And all he asks of us is that we love him back in return and that we accept his gift and his gift of salvation and his gift of promise to us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him would have eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Whosoever Whosoever means whoever, anybody. It doesn't matter who you are, whoever you are. All you have to do is say, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I have done bad things. I know that I've done wrong things, but I believe that you willingly carried that cross, accepted those nails in your hand, died and rose again on the third day. And I choose to accept you as my Lord and Savior. That's all he asks us to do. And then he asks us to love him and follow him and start to tell other people. You know, guys, that is one of my favorite things about Jesus is that he keeps his promises. He promised that he was going to rise again. He promised that he was coming back. And I know that that promise is still being fulfilled. He is coming back. And I'm going to be with him in glory. And I hope that many of you will be too. I hope that all of you will be too. I can't wait for that day. Happy Easter to all of you. God bless. Have a wonderful time with your family. And please share the Easter story with all of those around you. It's more than just chocolate bunnies. The Easter story is about what happened in that tomb. It's about what happens 
when that tomb is empty. It's about what happened leading up to that tomb being empty. Chocolate bunnies are fun. Egg hunts are fun. But Easter is about he's alive. It's about the fact that my Redeemer, he lives. God bless. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this chance to share with the boys and girls and grown-ups alike. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you and we praise you. In the name of your precious and wonderful Son, amen.